I'm walking around doing some uh, meetups for some business opportunities um, that I'm pursuing. Uh, some that I really can't talk about online just yet. Uh, but the reason why uh, the vlog is going to be short. Hey, how you doing, man? <laughs> but the reason why the vlog is going to be short kind of today is because uh, these things are not really, um, what's what I'm looking for? Uh, it's because I guess people don't really know I vlog, so it's something I can't really just show in a sense. But I will say that it is quite difficult to do a vlog in some of these cases. Um, or not really even to do a vlog. It's really quite difficult sometimes to have these conversations just because, uh, believe it or not, I get nervous. <laughs> and um, the fact that I get nervous kind of makes things uh, in a situation where I kind of have to work my way up to things. But um, a lot of my traditional business things are being a bit slow, so it's time to, to diversify. And um, which means that uh it gives you a little bit more urgency hey how y'all doing guys good good and so when it comes to urgency um i'm having to be a bit more direct and go after those things and you kind of can't make the excuse that you're nervous or otherwise it just doesn't get done at all so i'm trying to get to a point where I'm no longer have to feel my back against the wall in situations or feel like there's a sense of urgency pushing me. Um, it's very difficult where I'm trying to get to a place where these things just come a bit more natural. I hope that one day I can get there and basically just be better at talking to people about these things. And so uh, with that being said, about to go into another meeting. I want to take this opportunity to do a story time. One of the things that happened to me was I wanted to get involved in the film industry. Um, during this time, I wanted to do no, I wanted to just get in there no matter what I had to do. I just wanted to be on screen. And it was really important for me. So I didn't know how to. Um, I came up with a show on YouTube that you can watch. It's on Nerd Torch TV. And uh, it's basically where I interview either movie stars, TV stars, or uh, voice actors. And I ask them like, how do they get into their industry and if they had any tips for anybody else. So I did this for the show, but at the end of the day, I did this for myself because it's something that I needed to know. Um, Fast forward to doing it for almost a year. Actually, it only took me a year. Mm, that's interesting. <laughs> it only took me a year, but eventually I met Danny Trejo. And Danny Trejo, oh, I'm going to put the link for the Danny Trejo interview in the description down below if you want to watch it, as well as that will segue to Nerd Torch TV. If you're watching this on Instagram, though, I know Instagram doesn't allow links um, in their descriptions, so just go to Nerd Torch TV on YouTube and you can watch that there. So, um, talk to Danny Trail. And Danny Trail told me to basically get on set no matter what, I, what it is I'm doing. And I don't even know if he told me this on camera because I don't remember if it ended up in the final video or not. But he just basically said get on set no matter what. And just work and just ask questions, talk to people. Which is what I did. From there, um, I got on set and my first day was, I was, I was nervous, man. I, was, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. It was insane how um, just meeting people kind of like, my first set was Disney, actually. Um, it was Disney's movie, it was a Christmas movie for Noel. It was right around time that Disney Plus was about to come out. So Disney Plus wasn't even a thing then. Everybody knew it was coming, but it wasn't out yet. Then there was, um, what it was, um, I started talking to people on set and everything. 
meeting other extras. Um, I'm not sure if I can talk about what the scene was because they make you sound an NDA, but I will say the scene was not in the actual movie. Um, but <laughs> so I don't want to get in trouble <laughs> if I say it too much. So I'm not going to say anything at all. And from now on, I will read my NDAs a bit more in depth because I was like, there's no way I'll ever have time to tell anybody what I'm doing here, blah, blah, blah. So that changes now, obviously. So I won't say what the scene was, but I will say the scene was not in an actual movie. So you will not see me in that movie. It got cut. And anyway, so there was, I'm tired. Hold on, I'm kind of breathing hard. I'm holding up this massive tripod. <laughs> they hit me back. <laughs> but I'm going to have to figure out a way to like make this better somehow. Um, but it is heavy. Anyway, so um, I got on set and I'm learning about uh, just the different people that are there and just asking people like how long have they been doing this and is this their first time and how they get their job? How do you get more jobs? Blah, 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 blah. So I'm asking these people these questions and I meet this one person. I have no idea who they are anymore. Totally forget who they are. But I meet them and they, um, what do they do? They, um, 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 they go on this huge rant where they just talk about all the rules that I need to know about being on set. So these are all the rules that I need to know about being on set. And it's like, if you do this, you will get fired. If you do that, you will get fired. If you do this, you get fired. That, you get fired. And it's like, this is fired, this is fired, this is fired, 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 fired. And so going down this whole list of things where it's like, if you breathe wrong, you get fired. Uh, if you breathe towards the wrong person, you get fired. It's like so many things about getting fired. And so I didn't, I didn't feel great on set anymore. I felt almost like I was like stiff and I was kind of like didn't want to say anything or talk to anybody. And I felt like this just wasn't, a, I felt like I wasn't in a positive work environment, but it wasn't because the work environment was actually bad. It was because this person put me in a mentality that the work environment was bad. So I was like, all right, I got to get out this mentality. And, um, I did what you probably should not do, <laughs> which was I attempted to get fired on purpose. So my thought process was if I get fired, I want to make sure I see it coming because getting fired is not a good feeling. It's usually like you do something or you make a mistake. Somebody gets mad and so much of yelling, screaming, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, All right get out you know and I'm like I don't want to go through that uh, so if I do put myself in a position it's like I want to have control over that position or control over that situation because being when you're getting fired oh, let's fix this camera kind of crooked it's been bothering me I've been trying to ignore it but anyway when you're getting fired you don't really have control over that situation so I was like let me just get fired man let me just do something to get fired and then we'll, we'll go from there like once you get fired once then you will you get over the feeling and then maybe like if I do some other stuff by accident, then from there, uh, it won't be so bad if I get fired. Because <laughs> at least I got fired once before. Anyway, so I was like this. I was like, all right, so I start doing stuff like that. You, It's kind of like doing common sense stuff that you know you ain't supposed to be doing and just seeing what would happen. Um, so on set, they have this thing called holding. Um, I used to just sneak out of that. Holding is where all the extras go, like the background actors and stuff. Hi, I was a background actor. So that's where all they, all they go to like hang out until they actually need you on set. So from there, I would sneak out of there because I'm on set to learn, which is actually the opposite of what Danny told me to do. He was like, don't, don't, don't mess around on set. <laughs> Sorry, Danny, if you're watching this video. <laughs> but uh, I snuck out and I would just go on set when I'm not supposed to. And I would 
I always learned this thing when I was younger, that if you pretend to belong, then no one would notice you. So I was just walking on set, like, la, 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 and just say hey to people, like, hey, how you doing, how you doing, what's up? And then they'd be like, hey, good morning, you know, stuff like that. And so what happened was um, I was just see people, and I was just asking them about what they're doing and, and like, what their job was and stuff. So I was asking them. And they were like, wait a minute, you're not supposed to be here. Like, <laughs> are you? I was like, no, I'm actually a background actor. Uh, I just thought the set and everything on it was very interesting. I just wanted to know more information. Just, so I just figured I would ask. And they was like, all right, you should probably go back to where you're supposed to go. And so, boom, I didn't get fired for that. That was cool. And so, didn't get fired for sneaking out of holding. Didn't get fired of being out of position. Um, I can't remember any of the crazy stuff. The other stuff I've done, because it's pretty mild, like that's, that's pretty mild, like just sneaking out of an area, it's pretty mild. Um, the biggest thing I've done though, is, it got to the point where sneaking out of holding was such a normal thing for me to do. I just started just doing it so I can learn stuff about being on set. So I would like hang out with the camera guys, I would hang out with like the people, I learned what a script supervisor was. I learned like some lighting techniques from the lighting department. Like I was just hanging out with everybody. So <laughs> can't do that no more because of COVID. Uh, they kind of more strict on who walks where and who can even communicate with who. So can't do that anymore. But anyway, um, not that I plan on doing that anymore, but you just can't. So the wildest thing I've done on a film set was when I was trying to get fired, I would, my phone was dying and I found like the cart where they keep the camera and equipment for like the filming and stuff like that. They keep that on set. And so I actually took my phone charger and plugged up into like one of the outlets that was actually on the camera cart. And uh, one of the guys came by and it was like, I wasn't too far away, so I was in earshot, but he yelled, he was like, uh, whose phone is this? Uh, whose phone is this? And um, I came over and I was like, oh, that's mine. Uh, thanks, man. He was like, um, he was like, you're, uh, you, you know what this is, right? And I was like, what is it? Now, I, I, I kind of have like this, uh, this look I gave him that well, I was kind of like wide-eyed and bushy-tailed and just like had childlike wonder. I was like, what is it? I just stood there and smiled all. I like <laughs> and he was like, uh, this is the cart where we charge the, the, the equipment, like the batteries and things for cameras. And I was like, oh, really? That's really cool and interesting. I didn't know that. And then he like stared at me and I stared at him. And he was like, and this is the look on his face was more like, he was like, don't, 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 don't do this again. And I was like, all right, no problem, man. I appreciate it. And I took my phone from him. Like, I appreciate it. I took my phone from him. And I just turned and I walked off. <laughs> and, like, I eventually caught looking. And he was just standing there just staring at me like, who the hell is this dude who charged his phone on the camera cart? <laughs> I'm the dude. That is who I am. It's your boy, Nitro High Fire here. And, anywho, um... At that moment, I learned that it is not difficult. I mean, it is not, not, not difficult, but it is quite difficult to get fired from a movie set. Now, I'm not saying that y'all should go out and do that thing that I did because I attempted to get fired. But I will say after that specific moment, I was like, all right, cool. I'm golden. Like, I got away with charging my phone on the camera cart where it's designed to charge freaking fifty to seventy thousand dollar camera batteries like it's insane and i did it i did it i got away with it and i didn't get fired so after that i was like i can be a normal dude now and a normal worker on a film set without any worries of accidentally getting fired because if i couldn't purposefully get fired then i know i can't accidentally get fired but you know that's just my story on how I got over those getting fired jitters. But uh, for now, guys, can't wait to show you guys tomorrow's vlog. It's your boy. I'm out. Peace. Whew.